Okay. Everything that you can expect with the Dire Mall release, phase 1.5 hype. Yo guys, Punk got another video. So I just made a video covering Blizzard's announcement of Dire Mall being released a little bit yep. early on October 15th if you haven't been following the news at all. So that's in less than one week. And in that video, I said I would make a more edited style in-depth piece covering everything that Dire Mall has to offer. So the last one was a bit of a brief glossary over Dire Mall, giving you guys my opinions, but this one is really gonna delve yep. deep into pretty much everything. We've got a lot All to right. cover here, folks, so let's just get straight into it. This All right, is so the first thing that we need to cover is that Dire Mall isn't one sole dungeon, but rather three separate dungeons. As I stated in the last video, you do you've got Dire Mall North, which is an Ogre King hold, I guess. Can you like actually go through all three of the Dire Mall ones without actually leaving the instance? Because isn't there like a like pathways that connect all three of them? I, 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 yeah, you can. Okay, because they changed that in Cataclysm or something. I just don't remember exactly how they changed it. <clears throat> West and north, but not east. Okay. Yes, in a certain way. The final boss is the Ogre King, and the dungeon is guarded by the King's Guards. We've got Slipkick, Moldar, and Fengus. The Eastern Dungeon is an elemental and satyr zone, lined with vegetation and vines growing along. Oh, I just want to make sure you guys understand. Like, I watched the first two minutes of this, and I stopped watching it. And so I want to finish the video and uh, and wrap this up, okay? Like, I watched, like, maybe up to, like, right... Yeah, this picture right here. And uh, then I didn't watch the rest of it. And through all of the walls, okay. the entrance of the dungeon, I'd say, is pretty iconic with the overgrowth blooming through the courtyard gap and dire mall west is a more sinister dark magic arcane magic dungeon with elementals demons and undead that's where the big guy throughout. in the middle is each at. dungeon has its own unique flair not only when Shrek, it comes to the Tommy style Chung, the structure and, uh, but also they have unique Man. quests and rewards available in each dungeon Obviously. which we'll cover here in a bit but before we delve into that let's cover the key to the library so within dire oh, mall yeah, there's the a tunnel system key, right? which connects the dungeons and the median point being the library this okay. library is where many of the quests are handed in this is or where some of them are attained but you can't just get to the library each entrance to the tunnel system within the dungeons themselves are okay. locked as well as the entrance doors leading to dire mall north and dire mall west which is cool in order to i get like this. through you need this is what's awesome. called the crescent key and you get this from a quest in dire mall east which as i stated doesn't require a key at all okay so it's most likely the first oh. dungeon that you're gonna run with your friends when that's it where you follow that so fucking dude around in that dungeon called yes. Pusselin who starts yes, a quest dude. where he basically runs across the entire dungeon what a cop and you're sucker. tasked with following him at each checkpoint that he runs to. You know what I'm really excited for, guys, is being able to get another key and not having my key ring, so I have another one of my inventory slots that is effectively deleted. It's great. Then you kill him and pick up the key. Once you get that key, you gain access to the Dire Mall Trifecta, opening the opportunity for incredible rewards. So let's start off with covering each specific dungeon and what makes them unique. So while we're on Dire Mall East, we're just covering the key. Let's talk about it. DM East has a quest which is super important, and I mean really important to pretty much every mana user in the entire game. It grants us access to an incredible perk okay. that you may not even consider right now, but once you become accustomed to it, you'll never want to go back to your old life. And that's access to the best aqua refreshment in Classic WoW. Oh, this is a 55 water. water, right? Right now, mages are conjuring level 45 water, which restores, I guess, about 3,000 wow. mana after the drinking duration. But in DM East, there's a quest that leads to mages learning how to make level 55 crystal water, restoring over 4,000 mana per sitting. God damn! This allows damn. you to spend less time drinking and more time being the lead hero. God that has damn, dude! Needs. To get this done, it's really That's a, a lot better. process. You can pick up a quest called Arcane Refreshments from your keeper Lydros, yeah. who asks you to pick up Hydrospawn Essence from the boss, Hydrospawn deep in Dire Mall East, or at least about midway through the dungeon. You get the essence, and you're pretty much good. You can now craft the best water in the entire game, Fuck outside yeah. of what's available from the Argin Dawn vendor, which is equivalent, but costs money. Now in DM West, there's again something class specific, but absolutely huge for a couple of you guys out there. This We're is the talking Warlock about Paladin. the class specific epic yep. mounts for Paladins and Warlocks. That's what's so badass. I thought about this yesterday, right? I'm leveling up my Warlock right now. So in just a couple of days, or probably like a week or so, I'm going to be able to actually do this fucking Dreadsteed quest today, or not today, but like there on stream and get my epic mount. And I'm really excited to do that. I never did it back in the day. Same with the Paladin quest. I never did either one of these. So being able to go in here and do it again is going to be fucking awesome. 
I'm sure you guys know what's up with these mounts. They've been iconic for decades, even in the more modern expansions, right. making all of the other classes envious in the process. Of course. Now the quest for both mounts touched Dire Maul West, at least in some way. The Paladin one, obviously you guys know, you have to collect hundreds of gold worth of crafting mats, but also brings you to the first- It's not even that bad. That's not even that bad. What the fuck, dude? Six. Oh, what is this? 300, <coughs> 350 gold. Stratholm Holy Water. So that's like literally one run through Strat. 10 Arthas is tears. I don't know how much that is. 40 Rune Quath. Oh, wow. That's going to break the bank. Six Arcanite Bars. Okay, that's what? What? 35 times times six. So it's like maybe if we're up to like maybe 600 gold or so. Azrothian Diamond. Maybe like 10 gold. Pristine Black. It's not really that much money either. Like this is so much cheaper, man. So much fucking cheaper. Uh, they're like 72 gold right now? No, I don't think they're 72 gold on my server. Wait, are they really? They're 72 gold on our server right now? What? Fuck, dude. No wonder I don't see anybody with Arcanite Reaper. God damn. Boss in Dire Maul West. After slaying him, That's money. a blonde spectral horse 70 spawns. gold. And after you interact with that ghost horse, it's time to head yeah. to Skolomance to complete an encounter right. in Rattlegore's pit. And yep. then you've got your mount. The Warlock quest line took is this very out of the game, similar, except I guess it's inverted. First, you go to Skolomance for the prerequisite quest line. Then okay. you finish in Dire Mall West That's on the final boss's chamber for a final gauntlet event. Yep. I haven't done the That's what we're going to be doing, man. I have done I'm excited Warlock for this one. a lot. And that final gauntlet is actually quite difficult yeah there's waves and waves of demons flooding you over a pretty long period can we bring a 10 man in for this oh wait no i probably won't be able to because it's a raid quest and i won't be able to complete it shit okay yeah it's diff no it is actually difficult like it, it is it, in terms of classic wow content remember back like that ogre fucking event in lbrs where it's like you know fucking five ogres just pop up like, and they just kill you like, that's basically how this one is. It's actually difficult to do. I understand you guys might not believe that, but it's very true. <laughs> it's not hard. I think that it's hard. Time and keeping up with them yeah. is one thing in terms of the DPS, but sustaining through that entire gauntlet is yeah. another. So with if like you're a healer, make sure that you're geared and bring a bunch of mana potions yeah. or this event might get the better of you. That's now, the right. third dungeon is generally viewed as the cream of the crop in terms of Dire Maul runs. Right. And with good reason, I'd say. This is the Firstly, tribute, huh? it's probably the more difficult one. Those yeah. ogres hit really, really hard. But the reason it's so important, I'm sure you've heard of it before, is because there's a special way that you can run this dungeon the called Tribute Run. North Tribute Runs. Yep. So let's cover that really quick. Within this dungeon, you have the Ogre King and his three guards, as I mentioned earlier. His guards, as I stated, are Guard Moldar, Guard Slipkick, and Guard Fengus. These yep. guys are scattered throughout the entire dungeon, and you have the option of killing them either for items or leaving them alive, skipping by them with various different strategies, mm -hmm. then killing the King with them all still alive. If you choose that option, you have successfully completed a tribute run. After killing the king, well, the an guy's NPC name is will Fat run himself. into the final boss's chamber right. and crown you as the new king of ogres. I mean, it's real okay. barbaric. Kill the king, take his throne. Not only that... You well, that's how the ogres work, right? In, like, the lore of the ogres, right? This is something nobody cares about. But in the lore of the ogres, anyone can challenge the king. And if you challenge the king and you kill the king, you're the new ogre king. That's how it works. That's just this is how it's how it goes. And like the thing is like after before High Mall, basically I think it's actually in the lore of the game where after High Mall, all of the smart ogres got killed, and all of the dumb ones were the ones that were left. And that's why all the ogres now that you, you see are all dead and they're in ruins because all the smart ones that made the the castles and everything they got killed and literally just wiped up. Like America? Well, not really. I, mean, I don't think they're killing all the smart people in America, but they, they literally basically did that with the ogres. That's why you only see dumb ogres now. You the king now. Also get access to the king's treasure chest, which is yeah. incredibly lucrative. It drops one blue item for each guard that you did not kill. Fucking which incredible. Which means three blue items if you've done a full tribute. Oh, run, wow. As well as major mana potions, major healing That's potions, the food, and water. So you became the king of the ogres. Yeah. You get a massive bounty filled with really well I'm gonna itemized get that items. 
But does it and end I'm not there? Use it either. Absolutely not. There's it's one not more reward left to claim, and that's world buffs. Two hour yeah, buffs to go work? along with your rallying cry of the dragon slayer and the like. These wow. buffs are absolutely bonkers, boys. And I mean wow. bonkers. So during bonkers? that tribute run, you've purposely skipped all of the guards. Jeez. You left them alive. Well, now, since you're the king of the ogres, these yeah. guards now work for you. The of entire course. dungeon becomes friendly after you've been crowned. That's so you cool. You can now run through the entire dungeon unscathed, going from guard to guard, so taking up buffs buff. from each one. So Slipkick gives you a plus three spell crit buff, which is God obviously damn. incredible for casters and healers. Garfengus gives you a plus 200 attack power buff. I mean, come on, boys. What the 200 attack power. Warriors and rogues and hunters are salivating That's right now. That's insane. This combined with Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer is almost plus 400 attack power with both of those buffs combined. So like having five now extra you know pieces of armor groups on. Absolutely dumpster raids and how Molten Core was cleared in 17 minutes by apes. And Guard yeah. Moldar gives you a plus 15% stamina buff, which is super important for all raid members considering it allows you to deal with most raid mechanics a lot better to compensate for your low stamina and starter pve gear all now you might be them. thinking dire mall is a five-man dungeon how can you get 40 people in world buffs before yeah. raid will the guild run eight different tribute runs with eight different tanks and eight different healers no oh. generally the guild will have one or two groups clear tribute runs and then just zone people in to get the buffs and then as one person leaves the next one goes in and you basically just cycle people into those two ids get the buffs on all 40 people and then head to raid usually Wait a second. So you can just have, you, you can they, you anybody can talk to the ogres and it just gives it to you anyway. Wow. You have to talk to the guy at the end first, though. Oh, okay. So you have to talk to the guy at the end. Hunter soloing it. 45 minute process to kill MC in 20 minutes. So it's a one hour process. Yeah. So basically the way that you want to do this is that you want to spend two hours organizing world buffs to save 15 minutes clearing molten core. That is the meta for classic wow nowadays. Okay. Like that, that's, that's what it's all about. Builds that have level 20 warlocks waiting outside Dire Mall to summon the whole raid there to get buffed. Oh, and you also get access to an ogre vendor who sells you an alcoholic beverage that increases your stamina for 10 or 15 minutes. Truly this can incredible. be used alongside Rumsey Rome, from my understanding, so you can stack both of them at oh, once. Oh, wow. And you can buy an absolute metric ton of them. You could fill up your entire inventory Damn. and then put them all in your bank to always have them ready to go on the fly. It's just a little that's addition cool. to your consumable yeah, list. That's real cool. Oh, and I almost forgot you could get the ogre tannin, which allows you to get the Gordok Ogre suit. I mean, oh, thank check God. this out. And wow, lastly, in that, terms that, of content, there's also some really interesting farm runs involved with Dire yeah. Mall. I'll mention them really briefly since this isn't really a gold farming guide, but yeah. hunters can solo farm tribute runs by sneaking past most of the guards and most of the packs and using feigned death and some interesting tactics and then kiting the king to solo him. Mages, priests, and other AoE classes can do a little bit of a sapling farm in the courtyard of Dire Mall these are the East this is, for vendor trash, which is some really- This is the lasher farm that people are talking about that everybody thinks is going to ruin the economy. So people are really concerned about this Lasher run <coughs> because they're, they're worried that people are going to be able to do this and then just get so much uh, so much money and everything from this, they'll be able to just fucking vendor everything and add so much gold into the economy. Now, I, I don't know really if this is true or not. I, I have no idea. But I do think that it's possible that it could be a little bit overwhelming uh, for the economy. I, I think that we'll just have to see. Uh, I think that if Blizzard... If the Lasher runs are so powerful that they're injecting a ton of gold into the economy to where it's just devaluing everything at a massive rate and nothing else is worth any money, because I know that certain private servers, from what I've heard, actually nerfed the Lasher runs because of how powerful they were and how good they were. I don't know if Blizzard will do something about it or not, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And there's also dog runs, which is similar, where you kite the dogs up and down the little wall edge down here in uh, the DM North courtyard, in fact. 
and there's a couple other farms. So it's basically so if you're a class that can use. benefit from any of these. Yeah, you it's should basically check them animal out, Get an idea of how to execute them since it's pretty much insane gold per hour and yeah. very accessible. Okay, right. so that's the tribute run and world buffs. But what about some special item rewards? Okay. Garmal has some of the best in this regard, this is what we care which about. are tied into the Where's library, the which is what we mentioned earlier. The first are the Diarmal trinkets. There's one for each class, and some are absolutely incredible. Others, let's see. So we've got the trinket chance to hit his two percent healing done by spells is 20 wow dude mcconnell dude this trinket man 150 armor and it gives you healing done oh wow that's so great absolutely incredible look at that so the warlock trinket is pretty good the druid trinket is pretty good uh the mage trinket sucks uh let's see the let's see the priest trinket is actually pretty good the hunter trinket is pretty good 20 to 48 attack power the warrior trinket is dog shit and uh, the shaman trinket is pretty good you know leave room to be desired so let's go over some of the better options the hunter one for instance is really nice it's got plus yeah. 48 ranged attack power True. should be your number one priority once dm comes out the druid yeah, really one good. is great with plus 44 bonus healing the priest yeah. one is stupid good it's basically like a low level rejuvenation gem with plus healing and mp5 and the rogue one is really yep. strong as well with plus two percent hit so definitely we've got some That's nice really trinkets good. here in fact Especially we might be rugs. using some of these trinkets all the way to Max. In order to get uh, these, you need to complete a quest, and this quest Max. is one of the hardest in the entire game, one of the most time-consuming quest a lines quest. on planet Earth. You click a book and talk to a guy. Damn, oh. that was difficult. Okay, yeah, so you pick up a book, and then you get okay. the trinket. Basically, it's really you know that simple these books are okay. class specific however so getting your class book isn't as easy as you might I'm think concerned about the drop another rate book. on these not is these. really really low in the first place this so they're pretty damn rare right? honestly now all across dm there's a couple spots where a dusty tome can spawn on the ground yes. you click the dusty tome and you'll most likely get a gray book which has zero vendor value in yeah. fact you can't even vendor it so you'll just have to delete it out of your inventory just unless you're enough. some weirdo mm -hmm. who likes collecting weird junk for no reason what but the fuck if you're lucky you'll get a class specific tome home which is actually boe so depending on the class of said book it'll have a value based on how good the trinket is if you get the priest one you're in luck you can sell that bad boy on the auction house and buy the class specific book that you want with the profits or trade the book that you get for however you see fit and value for other items or maybe even another book but those yeah. aren't the only books that you can Got get it. there's also an epic one and it's called Foror's Compendium of Dragon Slaying, which is the tome that starts the quest leading to an epic reward called Kelsarar, one of yep. the most iconic swords in the entire game. I am getting this. is this. the most rare tome in oh, all of Dire Mall, and again, wait, it's dude. BOE, so you can wait, get it and then dude. sell it on the auction house. Oh, I can't wait After to getting the that. quest, you get a tarnished blade which can be brought into Onyxia's yep. lair. You plant the sword in the middle of her boss room during the encounter. Yep. And once phase two starts, you wait for her to cast a deep breath and that deep breath will treat the blade with heat, yep. infusing it with Onyxia's flame. You then pick up the blade from the ground and forge Kelsarar, the quest NPC. That's it's so really badass. It's a nice RPG style quest line, that I'd say. Forging it through the flame of a boss mechanic is really interesting. That's so fucking awesome. Like, I, I wish they did more things like this. Like, these are, like, I feel like this is just like the fucking, the quintessential, like, fantasy mechanics of the game. It's awesome. <laughs> Close for arms, fucking go. Yeah, you're goddamn right. Basically, a legendary weapon, almost a legendary weapon. But Asmongold reacts to being called a hoarder. Well, no, here's the thing, right? Is I do collect a bunch of useless, dumbass shit. And at this point in like Classic WoW, like I don't care about collecting useless shit in Classic WoW. I don't give a shit. But like in, in BFA, and like I've been doing this for like over 10 years, I have to keep doing it because I've done it so long. I have to keep doing it. It's like a responsibility now. So warriors and also paladins who feel like being quirky and having it for no reason since it's warrior and paladin specific the actual quest get to farm the compendium of dragon slaying all right now the last thing that we're going to cover are some of the best items that you can get in dire mall in general okay remember when i told you matters. that there's some really and i mean really good items from here many better than what's available in molten core well 
I wasn't lying. Check this out. We got gloves of restoration. Boom. Insane druid healing wow. gloves. Satyr's bow. Another option for the LBRS bow for melee. Yeah, DPS. I already have that one. With vine cord, an insane healing belt That's for a really all classes. Good belt. Vigilance charm. Good tanking trinket with no, 2% it's not. chance to dodge flat. Mind tap talisman. MP5 trinket. Really That's good really, for shamans. That's a lot of mana. And pretty much all other healers, yeah, but specifically Paladins used on shit. shamans. We've got Eldritch legs. Some of the best warrior DPS legs that you can get until Titanic legs. Uh, Eldritch Legs, 15 strength. Is Are those actually good? Uh, maybe they're actually better than than my Cloudkeeper Leggings, actually. They're really good. Because, like, 1% crit is, like, 21 agility. It's got less strength, but the Cloudkeepers have the buff on them. Not better? Uh, is it 29 agility? I thought it was 20 or 21. That, that was my understanding. 20 or 21. Uh, there is Dire Maul way too early, in my opinion. I think it's fine, honestly. It's not really a big deal. Uh, like, keeping things fresh matters a lot. 21? Well, whatever. Who cares? It's the same thing. Uh, either way, I'll get the leggings, and I might, you know what? I might as well just have both of them. I guess the Eldritch legs would be slightly better for DPS, as long as I don't, I, I haven't used the, the Cloudkeeper leggings, and I can just use both of them. We've got vile edge spolders and big iron spolders. Really the nice gear tanking shoulders, Padre's Chowser. Wait, do you really think that, you really think this, you think people are like, oh man, I'm not, I don't want to do MC anymore because dire malls out like who do you really think is going to do that like nobody's going to do that that that's fucking that's retarded like that that's actually retarded jesus christ some some of these like classic people just have no like i wonder if they even play the game i, I genuinely wonder that like do they play the game because sometimes i wonder I, I i don't even think that they do like that's such a dumb fucking thing to think that's a dumb fucking thing to think. Dire Maul is going to make like maybe one or two pieces of gear in MC invalid. Everything else is going to be fine. And it was going to come out anyway. It was going to make MC invalid anyway, right? Giving people extra stuff to do, I don't really think is a bad idea. Dire Maul has come out at a great time. It's not too soon or anything like that. People that are saying that just want to make sure, oh, well, there's still people that are level 40. There's going to be people that are level 40 in a year from now. Okay? You can't stop and wait for the slowest person. That's what Blizzard does in BFA, is they cater content to the slowest and worst common denominator of player, and then everybody else sits around waiting for that person to catch up, but they never do because they don't care. Spolders and big iron spolders, really nice tanking shoulders, Padre's Chowser, on the same level as Whipvine, stupidly yep. good PvE healer legs, Those are really Ice good. Dog Cord, yeah, which insane. is a really nice druid healing belt, distracting yep. dagger, insanely good rogue DPS offhand dagger with weapon skill, Six mugger's daggers. belt, another plus dagger weapon skill item, belt this time, warpwood yep. binding, top end hunter belt, gallant wrist guards, which are good on a paladin to like 40 <laughs> max, insightful hood, one of the best paladin the healing green, in the entire dude. game, sublime wrist guards, some of the best yep. entry level cast abrasers, barbarous blade, a great hunter two handed weapon, Weapon, leggings of yep. destruction, amazing hunter legs, brightly glowing stone, amazing healer offhand, fell hardened bracers, one of the only bracers available with plus defense on them for a really long time. Har Let's see, what are my bracers? They're 12 strength, 12 agi. I, there's no way I would use that. There's no way. Like, uh, the bracers of mine are much better. Harmonious gauntlets, stupidly good male healing gloves. I mean, plus 51 healing. I don't need to say anything else. We got Ogre Forge Hawbrook, a nice okay. alternative for Savage Gladiator chest for Hunters and Warriors if you're too lazy to farm that out. We've got Rod good of the Ogre Magi, a nicely itemized staff for Mages and Warlocks. I'm going to get that entry for level again. We've got the Tarnished Elven Ring, which yeah. is stupid good for Hunters and Rogues. Even Fury Warriors since 50 agility wow. is almost 1% chance to crit. I kind of view uh, this as a ghetto yeah. and of a Curia. Counter Attack that Lodestone, is really which is decent filler trinket if you have nothing it's better. Trash. And with Dire Maul being released, we also gain access to the recipe for Hide of the Wild, which is one of the best healing cloaks in the entire game. I mean, just check out this bad boy. Healers are going to be gunning for this one now that it's available. Holy moly. Okay. That, that was a lot. That's a okay, lot of stuff. so there you have it, friends. Dire Maul is packed to the brim with awesome goodies. Yeah, I, I wasn't see that. lying, right? Now, I know a lot of you guys are thinking, you know, it's too soon. You're not even level 60 yet. Why is Dire Maul being released? Hurry up. Or other things along those lines. But honestly, it's fine, fellas. It's going to be okay. It's just a five-man dungeon, and you'll get yeah. there eventually. I also yeah. kind of like that it's releasing a little bit early, since I, I can too. focus on getting everything that I need now before world bosses and PvP come out in Phase 2. Yep. Because when Phase 2 actually hits, I really want to focus on world PvP 
and not necessarily farming DM all day to be honest. It's some nice little filler content that we have while we're getting ready for phase two, I'd say. And it's definitely gonna keep us busy for a little while here. I'm super excited Is to see really, Dire Mall alongside you guys, and I'll for sure be Wait. hitting up some solo Dire Mall tribute farm runs and maybe making a video about it. So that's all I got for this Is one. Really? If you like this video and want to see more like it, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, you know the drill soldiers. Make sure to hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video straight out of the render oven. And with that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Okay, so what am I really going after in Dire Mall? Like, really, what, what, what am I going after? Like, what, what? I want to have the Eldritch Legs and Qual Sarar. That's it, right? Tarnished Elven Ring? I, I mean, I already have the, the Blackstone Ring. Which is like 20 attack power versus 15 Agi. I feel like 20 attack power, 15 Agi. And then I also get stamina out of the Blackstone Ring. Like, is it really better? Like, I already have Quick Strike Ring. That's obviously not better than Quick Strike Ring. Like, it, it's Bracers with plus 3 defense. I already have Bracers of Might. There's no way I'm going to replace that. Bracers of Might are really, really good. They give 20 fucking 3 stamina. If I care about survivability, 11 stamina is much better than 3 defense. It's much better than three defense, like by a fucking mile, especially with how weak crushing blows are now because of how much better players are in reacting to things like it, it's just it's no like just no, <laughs> it's not that good.